Pilipinos, dinadala yung mga kamag-anak dito at ina-adopt ng mga Filipino na U.S. citizen. When is that valid and when is it not? Linawin po natin ngayong hapon sa ating American Dream. This American Dream segment is brought to you by Aquino and Low Law Firm, answering your immigration questions. Attorney Allison Aquino, ang kakampi nating mga kababayan sa paglilinaw uh, ng mga uh, immigration laws. Hello and welcome to Kababayan LA. Hi, Janelle. Let's talk about adoption and immigration. What is the correlation? Um, well, it happens a lot because a lot of people have the idea of perhaps adopting a family member in order for that child to then get a visa in order to come to the United States. Or a, another common scenario from the Philippines is there's unfortunately so many children who are born and abandoned. Mm -hmm. And um, oftentimes the abandoned child is just taken on by the parents who are not the natural parents but are listed as the parents on the birth certificate. Right. That's not proper and so adoption procedures do need to be um, uh, taken in order to formally bring that child into the U.S. So it's not, it's not automatic? Um, well, the child, just because the individuals are listed as the parents on the birth certificate, of course it's not automatic that they can bring the child in, nor is adopting a child in and of itself enough in order to get a visa for the child to come into the U.S. So, so what other steps must be taken? Um, well, there, it's a very, very complicated situation, first of all, uh, let me say. Yes. It very much depends on whether the adoption is subject to what's called the Hague Convention. Mm -hmm. And the Hague Convention was a law that was uh, fully implemented on April 1, 2008, and the intention was to prevent the abduction, sale, and trafficking of children. Yes, okay. okay. And so the first analysis always has to be whether the Hague Convention is required. Um, in that analysis, we need to see whether the child is where the child is habitually residing. Okay. And so the determination um, starts with where is the child? Right. Is the child in the U.S. or is the child in the Philippines? Is there a sort of residency involved in this? Like if the child just got here like a month ago or two months ago, does that qualify? Well, in or in determining, first of all, if the child is in the Philippines, clearly the Hague Convention applies and the adoption procedures and immigration have to comply with the Hague Convention. Over there, do you have to do? Many things have to be done in both the U.S. and the Philippines, okay. um, whether the case is subject to the Hague Convention or not. Okay. The difference is, if it is subject, there are additional steps that need to be that need to be taken in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, in determining whether habitual residence is in the United States, one of the factors is the length of time that the child has been in the United States. So a month probably would not be enough because the presumption is that even though the child is physically in the U.S., the presumption is that the habitual residence is still the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And so we need to prove that the habitual residence has become the United States. Okay. And so they take a look at the length of time. They take a look at the ties that the child has already um, uh, established? established here in the United States such as whether they've already started school, the um, other family members that may be here, the activities that the child is involved in, if the child's already a member of a church organization or some, um, certain other social organizations. So all of those factors are taken into consideration if it can be shown that the child has already essentially you know, broken their bonds with the Philippines mm -hmm. and come into the United States and this has become the child's home then we can assert that the U.S. is the child's habitual residence and that the Hague Convention does not apply. Okay, and what about this thing that it requires that adoption must be completed before the ch a child's 16th birthday? Um, that requirement pertains to if the Hague Convention does not, not apply. Okay. And the process is the typical I-130 relative petition process. Mm -hmm. um, if the child, however, is subject to the Hague Convention, then it's a whole different set of procedures and steps. And the requirement in that situation is that the I-800A, which is the petition to determine that the child is eligible for adoption, that petition has to be filed before the child's 16th birthday. Okay. I'm a little bit confused, and I think that that's your role as an immigration lawyer. So when clients go to you and say, okay, let's say I go to you and I say I want to adopt this child from the Philippines, then you as a lawyer determines um, if, if it's eligible under Hague Convention or not, right? Correct. But either way, there's, there's a possibility. There's always a possibility. Um, uh, the main thing, though, with adoptions is that just like with marriage, you can't get married to a U.S. citizen just for the purpose of getting a green card. Okay. That's the same thing with the adoption. It has to be a bona fide 
adoption, mm -hmm. meaning that there has to be a bona fide parent-child relationship being established and not just because you want to get a visa for this child to come into the U.S. Does it matter? Because I know if it's, if it's a non-Hague Convention adoption, then it requires that adoption must be completed before child's 16th birthday. But with a Hague Convention adoption, uh, does it matter the age of the child? Not as far as completion of the adoption, but as far as determining that the, that the child is eligible for adoption. Oh. That determination needs to be, or the application for that determination needs to be submitted before the child's 16th birthday. Okay. And that yeah. is why you need a lawyer to explain these things to you and you go through the process, right? Yes. And the most important thing to remember is that with the adoption and immigration, if the process is not followed, sure, you might be able to complete the adoption, but if it's not, if the procedures are not followed, you would not thereafter be able to immigrate the child oh. based on that adoption. And when you get denied because something's lacking, can you reapply? No. Oh, and that's why if you're ever going to go through the adoption process right. and you intend on getting a visa for that child, you need to make sure to go to an immigration attorney. Exactly. It's very, very complicated. Very it's crucial. Not, it, many attorneys do not know about the Hague Convention right. because of its complexity. Right. And Attorney Alison Aquino is not just a regular immigration lawyer. She is a board-certified specialist on immigration, right? Yes. And that is why thank you for explaining and clarifying these things with us. They do give a free office consultation. That's the number to call on the screen. Schedule your appointments now. Or if you want more information, log on to their website, AquinoLaw.net. Thank you so much for more power to you. Always a pleasure to you. Next time, thanks. Gary Valenciano, when we return on Cabo Bay in LA, don't go away.